opportunity to uh, expose you to some of our unpublished work, and uh, uh, in particular the work of the uh, following uh, people, and uh, uh, who, uh, uh, as uh, follows, uh, uh, Mahesh is still he is now with IBM, and he did uh, a lot of work together with Pian Ri, who returned to Korea uh, on uh, uh, the uh, uh, Platinum Zealite Chevron Research uh, did the work on uh, uh, supported uh, gold uh, canvas. Fred uh, Ramp now at the uh, uh, cupboard. Uh, Ladas uh, will return to Greece and Shinichi Chikawa with that you see at uh, Santa Baba. Uh, so this is the, the work on, uh, uh, on the model system. Uh, palladium supported on single crystal alumina. Uh, Francisco, who's back in Spain, uh, did uh, the work on. Oh, thank you. Uh, did uh, the, the work on uh, coking of platinum alumina uh, catalysts, and uh, Art Alameda uh, helped uh, in uh, many of the investigations uh, in a very uh, material way. And these are the uh, good people who supported the work. Uh, so, uh, let me first uh, tell you what I am not going to uh, talk about uh, in this review of metal support uh, interactions. I'm not going uh, to talk about uh, these very well established phenomena, uh, fractional growth uh, of metals on, uh, on very or not of metals, on support attack, and bifunctional catalysis. I'm rather uh, going to focus on uh, four uh, still uh, quite imperfectly understood uh, uh, phenomena and uh, report for each one of them uh, some uh, new results uh, that we have obtained. So first of all, we have the uh, uh, sort of the classic uh, uh, phenomena, uh, both of them uh, uh, well identified by Schwab in the 1950s. If you put a metal on the support, you might think that the metal will change its behavior. I mean, behavior with respect to catalysis, that's what is of interest to us. And vice versa. Uh, and uh, I shall actually uh, uh, start uh, with, with this, this one here, perhaps uh, a neglected, uh, although perhaps much more direct uh, way to have a metal support interaction. And then I'll go from uh, spillover uh, uh, forward uh, and, and reverse. Uh, uh, spillover is so convenient when we don't understand something, we can always <laughs> So, we have a metal and a, a semiconductor or a, an insulator with defects, and we put them in uh, contact, and uh, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, phenomena. And these phenomena were uh, pointed out a long time ago by Schottky and ana analyzed by physicists even before 1940. And uh, what happens really is that you get uh, electrons uh, transferred from the metal to uh, defects in the uh, uh, semiconductor or vice versa. Uh, as a result, you create a space charge in the semiconductor or insulator and you uh, change the, uh, the uh, density of, uh, uh, of uh, electronic defects in the semiconductor. This is in a layer extending from the metal uh, semiconductor interface deep into the semiconductor uh, at distances of 10 angstrom, 100, 1000 and more, uh, the thickness of the Schottky layer. Well, uh, this 
was well known, discussed a lot during the 1950s, and I uh, uh, want to bring your attention on a, a very interesting article in Nature, uh, August 1988. Uh, the uh, author is uh, Frost, and I would say representing a large group at, uh, at BP, uh, uh, England, and uh, uh, this deals with uh, this uh, the possible, I take no sides, the possible importance of this effect uh, in a normal uh, catalytic reaction, methanol synthesis, in particular uh, zinc oxide uh, copper. And uh, I uh, uh, hope that uh, I checked and I think that I, I even could read it, so maybe uh, everybody can read it from the back. And this is what what uh, what uh, uh, this group says. So it's a group of, large group of people, a lot of work. The work has not been published. Yet. But the idea is simple. They, they, dis they, they discovered or rediscovered, because the top two people had seen it before, uh, that uh, uh, under uh, conduct con conditions of, of production of the catalyst, uh, there are uh, for a copper zinc oxide catalyst, there are, uh, there are uh, uh, clusters of uh, copper as identified by Exash, copper metal. And they say, okay, what does it do? Well, uh, we have in the zinc oxide, in the reduced, reduced state, we have uh, oxygen vacancies. The uh, uh, metal sends electrons uh, to uh, these uh, uh, vacancies, they are trapped, and then H2 is dissociated uh, by these electronic defects, uh, forms uh, H minus, and according to uh, uh, some uh, language uh, developed recently by uh, organometallic chemists, CO uh, is, uh, is uh, added, and you get COH minus, COH2 minus, finally the electron goes back to the metal and you get uh, methanol. Uh, I uh, uh, think it would be very interesting to uh, uh, put this, uh, this work when it appears in perspective with uh, the uh, uh, other views on, uh, on the methanol uh, synthesis of these catalysts. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite uh, stimulating, I, I think, to, to uh, find such a proposal in the current literature, uh, and I think the physics of it is quite good, judging from the uh, uh, details that have been published. Well, uh, I think we should really keep this in mind. Uh, for instance, uh, a year ago, well, two years ago now, uh, there appeared in CNN News and in Ankebante Chemie, uh, a uh, rather uh, interesting, surprising piece of work uh, by uh, Meyer and his co-workers in Berkeley at the time. And uh, what uh, these people did is uh, to uh, uh, evaporate, uh, or deposit, I should say rather, to deposit on a platinum film, completely covering it, uh, a silicon uh, uh, dioxide overlay, uh, and then to carry out on top uh, of, of it all, uh, reactions involving the activation of, uh, of hydrogen. This is alkane chip exchange, other reactions where cyclohexene hydrogenation and cyclohexene dehydrogenation uh, uh, at higher temperatures. And uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, group uh, tried to convince itself, and I think perhaps successfully even I was convinced by uh, uh, physical uh, uh, investigations that there were no holes uh, in uh, the layer, uh, scanning electron microscopy, that there was no platinum uh, that had diffused on top of the layer. They changed the layer thickness from 10 to 100 and more uh, 1,000 uh, angstrom, and I could see no difference in the uh, catalysis uh, uh, rates, uh, catalytic rates uh, that were measured. They proposed that uh, H2 was somehow diffusing to the layer, uh, being uh, dissociated at the surface of the platinum, and the hydrogen atom, at, uh, atoms would uh, go back uh, to the surface uh, and do their uh, catalytic job. Uh, in the, the paper, I 
think there are two key observations that uh, convinced me that uh, we should take this uh, uh, seriously. Uh, namely, that uh, the, the uh, SI, uh, the, the silicon dioxide over there, was produced uh, by depositing it from a uh, plasma source. And my friend in uh, my friend in electronics tell me that uh, this is not SiO2 that uh, is produced in this way, SiOx, defect SiO2. And the second short uh, half sentence in the paper, Dangevanto uh, Chemie says, uh, if everything uh, was stopped, uh, all catalysis stopped if the uh, film was annealed in oxygen at high temperature prior to uh, the catalytic runs. So, uh, my uh, little suggestion here uh, for the purpose of, I'm sure, further discussion. Uh, we have a, a, another example of the uh, metal support interaction that I uh, was just uh, telling you about in the case of the methanol synthesis. We have uh, vacancies, oxygen vacancies, uh, SiO2. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, electrons that are transmitted to this uh, 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 shot layer, and in particular at the surface, uh, where, according to the uh, mechanism proposed by Frost et al., uh, H2 would dissociate and does its catalytic job. Well, uh, in any event, I think that if we want to uh, be uh, convinced about this type of uh, uh, this type of uh, metal support interaction, uh, we should do it with a metal uh, which is absolutely uh, no good at all, and uh, for any catalysis at all. And when it is, there is always a suspicion that there is some impurity. What is this metal gold? Uh, uh, we had the idea uh, a few years ago, and I convinced uh, Zhang Guang that uh, she would uh, uh, make it her PhD dissertation, that perhaps gold could be uh, tickled to some kind of catalytic activity if it were supported uh, in a zeolite, and perhaps uh, that the other effect uh, that I'm going to talk to you about in a minute or so would be observed, namely that the, me the metal that was absolutely uh, inactive would be activated by some kind of metal support interaction of the second kind. Well, uh, uh, it was not possible to prepare uh, clusters <coughs> of gold in the zeolite that would stay there. Uh, gold at a very low melting point, and uh, clusters of gold at, at, at a, a, an even smaller, uh, lower melting point, and the clusters that were successfully prepared just flowed out of the cages after preparation and uh, going up to room temperature and above. All right, so next best, uh, let's uh, try gold on the magnesium oxide. And uh, the work that was done and uh, uh, is still uh, at the moment uh, uh, hidden in a uh, accepted but not published PhD dissertation, uh, the work was, was uh, uh, I, I think, quite convincing in one respect, that no impurities could be made responsible for the observed catalytic reaction, namely the, the catalysis between H2 and O2, on gold supported on magnesium oxide. Uh, uh, we really went to town on that one, uh, getting a certified sample of gold from Johnson Mathe, uh, uh, not trusting their certified analysis. We did it uh, 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 again at Catalytica, uh, and uh, less than one ppm of any kind of uh, uh, impurity uh, uh, was present uh, in, in these samples, both before uh, uh, supporting them on magnesium oxide and after supporting them on magnesium oxide and uh, preparing the, uh, the active catalyst. The active catalyst consists, as I'm going to tell you the result about, consisted of uh, small uh, particles, clusters of two nanometer or so uh, of uh, gold uh, on uh, uh, on magnesium oxide. They were characterized by, uh, by uh, exams. Uh, the 
was not enough metal to do it by X-ray diffraction. And uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the shocking result, <laughs> many results, I'll just show you one, uh, is uh, on, on this, thank you, uh, on this uh, uh, transparency here. These are the conditions of the work. Uh, comparing what was found on the gold magnesium oxide, the sample I was telling you about, uh, and platinum, uh, 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 our old sample that we have in our bank, uh, where uh, uh, Frank Hansen and others did their work, Osman and whatnot. Uh, and uh, what we see here for a, a side time yield, number of uh, molecules uh, of water produced per second per site. Uh, we see that uh, uh, really gold is not that bad. It's not that bad. And uh, uh, I think one of the su main successes of this work uh, was to interest <coughs> Bob Maddox into and uh, colleagues to do some uh, very good uh, work on uh, sim large single crystals of gold. And. Uh, uh, when we were writing up this, this work for the dissertation, I should say, Jack Wright did, uh, Bob said, well, I don't understand you people how you can do a thing like that. I tell you, we cannot uh, dissociate uh, O2 on a single crystal of gold at any temperature that we have tried. This, by the way, was contrary to some uh, data in the literature uh, that were refuted by the fact that uh, the, uh, the when it was reported that indeed O2 was dissociated at high temperature on gold, it was because of silicon or other impurities diffusing to the surface of the crystal in time and reacting to form uh, SiO2, for instance. Uh, Bob Maddox tells us H2 does not dissociate on gold at any temperature. Please tell me, propose to me a mechanism by which we can make uh, uh, H2 and O2. If you write the thesis, you will find a mechanism. <coughs> but I, we, I suspend the publication until uh, 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 some kind of, a, of idea uh, came to our mind. The idea that came to our mind is what I was just telling you about. Uh, and uh, it is that uh, gold uh, supported on magnesium oxide. And I will now use a, a phrase that I heard on Monday from, uh, this is uh, Johannes, uh, I believe. Uh, he said that uh, so the gold messes up with the magnesium oxide, uh, that is on the support. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the messing up I propose here is a uh, electron transfer to electronic defects uh, in the uh, magnesium oxide. A high specific surface area magnesium oxide defect, magnesium oxide is not just uh, an ideal uh, inert uh, uh, material. And, uh, that's uh, the best I can uh, propose at the moment, and I think that uh, we should really consider uh, this neglected mechanism of metal support uh, interaction uh, a little more uh, uh, seriously uh, and uh, in view of the, of the physics uh, behind it. All right, second and uh, much more well-known uh, is, uh, and now I'm going to shift to, uh, to slides. <coughs> is the, uh, the case where we do the other thing, uh, namely uh, the uh, metal and the support are in contact, and somehow the metal becomes uh, different. Uh, a lot of work has been done by uh, us, by others, on uh, uh, platinum in the super cages of a YZ alignment. And uh, some of the work, but not all of the work, I'm going to summarize very briefly here, uh, has been published in ultramicroscopy a couple of years ago. Uh, there is uh, some more in the course of publication. And so this is a, 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 a TEM of one of our samples where we believe we have uh, uh, platinum clusters uh, of uh, about uh, oh, uh, 0.7 nanometer uh, in size, maybe 20 atoms or so uh, in, in the super cages of the white zeolite. And the uh, thrust of the work was to 
prepare their, their, their lives of, of, their, of uh, with uh, uh, various cations exchange it to uh, it so that uh, uh, we would have uh, different kinds of acidity or basicity uh, and relate this to the rate of a catalytic reaction. Uh, <coughs> we uh, had uh, unfortunately great difficulties in getting a real physical uh, uh, hold uh, on uh, the uh, uh, gold uh, clusters. And by that I mean that in our EXAF's work uh, and in our uh, Guzain's work, the uh, near-edge spectroscopy, uh, we uh, did not uh, find evidence, as we had found with Bob Weber earlier, uh, for uh, a change uh, in the uh, uh, electronic uh, uh, structure of the gold clusters. Uh, I didn't know. I'm sorry. But I'm upset with gold, obviously. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, we, uh, uh, this is where the, the situation rests. Uh, you heard uh, perhaps uh, uh, the, uh, the talk of uh, uh, Professor Bartoma uh, uh, on the work on, on this system and uh, uh, her belief, well, but if I may quote her, not uh, certainty uh, about the effect that I was telling you about as evidenced by changes uh, in the uh, rates of reaction uh, for aromatization of uh, hexane uh, with changes in acidity and basicity. Uh, ourselves, uh, in, for, for, for this work that I'm relating here on these samples, uh, we found a, uh, an increase in the rate of hydrogenation of ethylene uh, with increase in the uh, uh, concentration of uh, protonic sites uh, in the uh, uh, wild zeolite. Uh, but these effects, uh, so far as uh, uh, we are concerned, are not really terribly large. Uh, we talk about a change uh, by a factor of five also of the turnover rate uh, for ethylene hydrogenation on, on the platinum zeolite uh, uh, situations, uh, the platinum zeolite uh, catalyst. Uh, nevertheless, uh, rather than go into detail, uh, let me show, uh, with your permission, uh, a uh, slide that uh, uh, Professor Bartomap showed. Uh, and uh, this uh, deals with the uh, effect of uh, the uh, support that really, I think, sums it all up what is expected uh, in, in this particular metal support uh, interaction, going from a neutral to an acid to a basic support uh, in contact with the platinum cluster. Uh, when we uh, look at the stretching frequency of the uh, CO molecule, we would find a, a, a shift uh, in one direction or the other, uh, depending uh, on the uh, nature of the uh, support. Uh, so let, let us uh, conclude here, perhaps, saying that uh, uh, this is still moving ahead. It's not conclusive. Uh, we'll need some more work. Second part of, of, of my talk, let's talk uh, about spillover forward and, and reverse. Now, uh, spillover forward from the metal uh, to the support for some species of interest in a catalytic reaction uh, has been debated uh, for a long time. I think it's there. The question always is uh, how important is it uh, in a uh, real catalyst uh, that operates uh, 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 at, at, a, at a, uh, a respectable rate. Uh, spillover seems to be uh, a rather slow phenomenon uh, in all cases uh, where it has been uh, documented. Uh, say, spillover of hydrogen. So, uh, I'm going to tell you now about uh, the uh, evidence, indirect evidence, for the spillover of uh, coke precursors on a platinum alumina catalyst. The question that we asked uh, was uh, uh, when we uh, pass uh, normal hexane hydrogen mixtures on a uh, standard, uh, or not so standard, we made it ourselves, but with the 5% of platinum to see things better with all the methods that we use, uh, at uh, temperatures uh, and uh, 
uh, for a length of time that uh, were dictated to us by a Berkeley investigation on a large single crystal of platinum. How much coke do we deposit on the metal? And uh, I call it coke, uh, uh, Berkeley calls it carbon, uh, fine. Uh, the, the question was that uh, uh, in Berkeley, the group of uh, uh, Kappa Somerjai uh, reported that for specified conditions of pretreatment of the uh, single crystal with uh, hexane hydrogen mixtures, they got up to 98% of the uh, 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 plenum surface coked up. And uh, we were very uh, curious to, uh, to uh, about checking this. And uh, so uh, Francisco Rivera uh, later did that. And uh, the problem then was uh, to A, to choose conditions of coking that were more severe than those uh, uh, used in Berkeley. So the work that I report here was done under conditions that were more severe, uh, longer uh, reactions at higher temperatures uh, than those in Berkeley on the second crisp. And the next result, Summarized here, this is now in uh, uh, course of publication in uh, ARCHG journal, is that by four independent techniques, uh, the uh, old titration of uh, uh, pre absorbed oxygen by uh, H2, uh, the, uh, uh, the chemical, <laughs> irreversible chemisorption of carbon monoxide, irreversible uh, at room temperature. Uh, in, all in the presence of residual hydrogen at the surface, I dare say, because we did not want to remove the surface hydrogen uh, before the chemisorption runs, uh, fearing that we would change the uh, nature of the uh, 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 coke precursors and carbon at the surface of the metal. Uh, confirming this uh, chemisorption uh, of carbon monoxide by uh, quantitative determinations of the absorbance uh, of carbon monoxide as a function of coverage. This was made uh, enormously uh, easier by the fact there was hydrogen at the surface so that the carbon mon uh, monoxide could not uh, see each other. Thank you, Kayla, it's much better. <laughs> And uh, finally, uh, uh, checking all of this uh, by uh, ethylene hydrogenation, uh, going back to the standards of uh, Jim Schneider uh, a while back. And uh, in all cases, we find uh, that uh, only about half of the surface is covered with carbon. In other words, that half of the surface is free uh, of, uh, of uh, carbon uh, uh, species. And uh, what do we conclude from that? Well, uh, what really uh, we conclude uh, is uh, uh, really from our purpose here uh, is that uh, we get less carbon and, and, and uh, uh, more severe conditions than in Berkeley. And uh, frankly, uh, after thinking about anything that could be wrong with the Berkeley results, I couldn't find anything. Uh, and therefore, I blame it on the support. I blame this difference on the support. And the mechanism we invoke uh, is uh, one that has been pretty much documented by uh, Pereira and his group in Santa Fe, Argentina. And uh, he says uh, the, uh, the uh, coke precursors of the surface of the metal under reforming conditions uh, uh, surface diffuse to the support. Uh, and, uh, uh, and die there before they die on the metal. And uh, uh, this is spillover of a uh, uh, reaction intermediate, uh, which uh, contributes to a side reaction. Uh, this is a slow uh, reaction as compared to the main reaction, and this is perhaps why this kind of spillover uh, is indeed important in a, a real catalytic uh, reaction. <coughs> Last uh, is an, an example of a reverse spillover. We have a, a, a species that uh, participates in a catalytic reaction and it, uh, uh, it uh, 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 leaves 
used by surface diffusion, it leaves the support, contributes to the surface uh, catalysis of the matter. We found an example of this recently, it just appeared in Langmuir, uh, in the case, the old case of CO oxidation uh, on supported palladium, palladium being supported uh, on uh, alumina single crystals, the uh, uh, system being a, a one of these uh, model systems of catalysts uh, that uh, have, have, have been first tried successfully by uh, Helmut Popper and his group, uh, first at NASA, now at IBM and Stanford. First of all, let me show a, an early result of, in this kind of, uh, of experiment uh, on these model catalyst systems, palladium uh, particles evaporated uh, on the support with dimensions between less than one nanometer to a little over eight nanometer. Turnover rate under set conditions, uh, and it, it doesn't matter uh, here, it doesn't change with particle size, and it uh, is really uh, practically uh, equal to that uh, reported by the group of uh, Efton on uh, a single crystal here uh, of, uh, exposed, of palladium exposing one on one phase, but it is also true on other phases uh, of palladium. So here we have uh, the uh, the uh, uh, ultimate simplicity in metal support interaction. Now, I think we should keep that in mind. This is not the only example. Support metal interactions can be uh, so weak as not to be observed in catalysis. Uh, this is perhaps the best definition of weak interaction. We don't say there is not this, of course, if there is one. I mean, these particles, uh, you, you know, they, they, they don't move on, on, the, on the support. They, they interact with the support. But for the, from the viewpoint of catalysis, there is no effect, uh, even for very small particles uh, uh, going down to less than one nanometer in size. So uh, let's go now to what happens not at this temperature, but at the higher temperature, something that puzzles us so much that uh, a second graduate student did that. And now it was repeated by, not repeated, extended by a third graduate student to see this uh, uh, reverse spillover effect uh, that uh, we suspected after reading some papers from the group of Gilles in Marseille. And it uh, led us to uh, uh, believe that the critical experiment to uh, find, to, to, uh, uh, to uh, demonstrate uh, the existence of this effect uh, would be to prepare uh, different uh, 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 samples with a surface density. Uh, <coughs> well, the surface density for this one is uh, uh, the number of particles per square centimeter, about 10 to the 12. This corresponds uh, to uh, density on a typical uh, uh, industrial catalyst. Uh, and then uh, we can uh, decrease that certain number density by two orders of magnitude. And uh, so we have a two orders of magnitude difference in the number density of particles. This is just something that uh, was done on several uh, samples, uh, playing with this particular variable, uh, variable playing with the temperature and playing with number uh, with, with the, the size of these particles. And uh, what was found? was that contrary to what happens at lower temperatures uh, where we have no effect on particle size uh, at, any, uh, at low temperatures, here depending on the temperature uh, and the particle size, we have a, an effect which uh, well is of the order at the most of a factor of four. Uh, now you might say, well, this is a, this is a uh, particle size effect. Well, uh, uh, we believe this is a particle size effect, but not of the kind that would change the structure, uh, the atomic structure of the metal or the electronic structure of the metal. This, we believe, is due to the fact that carbon monoxide uh, absorbs on the support, uh, besides absorbing directly on top of the palladium particle, and the second secondary flux can become even more important than the primary flux, uh, perhaps four times as important here. Uh, 
the CO molecule diffuse uh, to the interface uh, between the alumina and the palladium. And uh, if they have not dissolved before getting there, uh, they will contribute to the uh, making of CO2 molecules. Uh, the real uh, 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 clinch was this experiment uh, with uh, different number densities of particles. And uh, 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 where uh, we found that indeed, as the uh, uh, for, for a given particle size of palladium, uh, depending on the temperature, we have a sizable difference at low temperature, but converging to no difference at higher temperatures in the turnover rate. So that uh, the uh, the uh, turnover rate uh, is uh, less on the denser material. 10 to the 12 per square centimeter than on the more dilute material, 10 to the 10 uh, uh, particles per square centimeter. The model that you find in Langmuir uh, is not very sophisticated, although you can do it in a very sophisticated way, as uh, suggested by uh, uh, Professor Harris of Minnesota. Not suggested, as, as, as uh, developed very elegantly by Professor Harris. Uh, in this model here, a simplified model, uh, everything happens in this uh, surface diffusion uh, reaction uh, uh, problem, uh, as if uh, every particle, this is the, the dot there, every particle of palladium uh, is surrounded by a collection zone, uh, uh, imaginary collection zone, uh, such that if a CO molecule strikes the alumina outside of it, it will not be collected, it will not contribute uh, to uh, the uh, flux uh, contributing to CO2 molecules because the molecule will dissolve before uh, uh, it gets there. Uh, as uh, the, the radius of this collect collection zone is determined by the temperature. And uh, as uh, the, uh, the density increases, the, uh, everything has been equal, uh, the uh, uh, zones overlap, and this is the reason for uh, the uh, effect, uh, the negative effect, by increasing the surface density of that. Uh, temperature has a negative effect on the effect uh, of the, the spillover, the reverse spillover, because it shrinks the uh, radius of the uh, uh, collection zone, and finally the radius of the uh, particles of palladium has an effect. Uh, uh, because uh, obviously uh, as the particle becomes uh, smaller, uh, the secondary flux becomes more important. Uh, so we can explain all the effects quantitatively uh, by this very simple model and uh, uh, we have, I think, uh, a, a, a quite a, a good evidence for the importance in this case of the reverse spillover effect. Uh, let me conclude. Uh, we uh, 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 support interaction from weak to strong. Uh, a strong uh, metal support interaction, I submit, is one uh, where something happens that without the support uh, would not uh, be observed at all. Uh, gold, magnesium oxide, H2 plus O2. Uh, without the support, nothing happens. With the support, something happens that is quite appreciable. That, I think, would be the true meaning of strong metal support interaction. Weak support interaction, nothing, no importance, that's easy. Uh, it is the cases in between which will continue to give us trouble. They are not completely settled. Uh, and uh, I think that there we need uh, uh, surface science techniques to uh, uh, move ahead. Uh, we are not going to, to, uh, to uh, uh, get very far by, uh, by studying further uh, an industrial catalyst for methanol synthesis. We, we must really simplify our model systems of the type that I was suggesting in the case uh, that we have used in the case of the uh, CO oxidation, namely these, uh, these uh, uh, control systems of uh, uh, evaporated metals on large single crystals. Thank you. Thank you very much for this inspiring lecture. We are uh, behind schedule. I can permit two short questions. The first finger I saw is Richard Joyner. <laughs>
Richard Joyne and I of the University of Liverpool. Perhaps as, as a former head of the Cross Group at Sunbury, I can expand on one or two things that you've said. Firstly, the electron transfer is in fact from, suggested to be from the support to the metal, not the other way around. And the significance of this is that it allows you to create a significant increased number of oxygen vacancies. The other thing that is of interest is that we have also tried to follow along the same idea as you have of taking a metal which would be expected to be completely inactive on its own. We tried to use gold and were not successful because we couldn't get rid of the chloride. But we did the same thing with silver, and we made a silver thoria catalyst which showed a remarkably high activity for methanol synthesis. And of course, neither CO, CO nor hydrogen will, dissolve, will absorb to any significant extent on silver. So we've gone very much along that line. Thank you. We'll talk about it privately. Uh, the second and last question, Dr. Frank Santon. Well, something, thanks for the Netherlands. I very much appreciate the data you showed on changes in catalytic activity of metal particles included in zeolites if you change the cations. We know that from Stanford work, from Paris work, from Cambridge work. What I would like to challenge is the idea that we need electron transfer between the metal particle and the zeolite in order to explain it. We have done high quality, uh, local density calculations on small particles and contact with cations. And what you see clearly is that because the cation can polarize a small particle, it can induce changes in the uh, interaction energy of the order of 10%. So I would like to suggest that what we also need in the considerations of uh, metal support interactions is the idea that we have significant, have significant polarization effects if you have cations close to metal particles. I agree 100% with what you said. I did not use the word electron transfer. And I also deplored our failure to uh, 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 characterize whatever effect there is by good physics, which we have not succeeded with. Thank you once again.